Following last week's breaking news as we recorded, India's Chandrayaan 2 lunar mission has had a major setback. Brad's with me as he gets ready to fly to the Gold Coast for today's Talk and Science. With Dr. Brad Tucker and Matt Miller, this is Talkin' Science on Trek Zone. Well, he's here with me, as he always is, every Tuesday, as my voice continues to recover from the awesome AFL finals season that has begun. Brad, uh, welcome to Talking Science. How's it going? Good, uh, mate. You should have heard me uh, Sunday and uh, <laughs> yesterday screaming for the mighty yeah, Richmond yeah, Tigers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's uh, in Canberra, it's been exciting because the Raiders are close to the finals. So, you know, it's uh, I understand. I think it's one of the interesting things I like about Australia is there's so many different types of football that everyone gets into. And it's all called football. Exactly, and it's all called football. I try to explain that to people overseas, and they think we're crazy. (laughs) Many people do. Many people don't get Australians. (laughs) Hey, speaking of not quite getting something, uh, this new technology that's coming to Mount Stromlo. Yeah, so this is is really cool. So one of the things that we have really been working on is something we call uh, laser optical communications. And so this is essentially it's a fancy way of saying we want to start transferring data data uh, through a laser beam. And this is really cool because one of the things it allows us to do is that, you know, well, there's two aspects. One, when you're sending a radio beam into space, like it, it, it propagates away, right? You know, the beam spreads out. So this provides two critical problems. One, the signal strength weakens. And so you don't maybe get as effective download rates. But two, you know, let's say you're talking to your favorite satellite and, oh, it just so happens the U.S. or Russia park a satellite right next to yours. Well, then (laughs) they get the information that you're sending. So it ends up being not very secure. But we think we found a way around both these issues, and that is using laser beams. And this is very cool. It's going to be called, uh, or it is called, a quantum optical ground station. And it's going to be built uh, where you work at Mount Stromlo. That's right. So besides having kind of every almost buzzword in it, (laughs) it's a really cool thing. And so what this will allow us to do is to literally transfer information uh, via laser beam. Now, the benefit of this is you can actually compress the laser beam quite well. So you can really tighten the beam as it sends up in the space. And this allows you to do two things. One, we think that we can actually build a laser more powerful, that it can actually transfer faster download rates. So if we send something to low Earth orbit, we think that we can get um, maybe the speeds of about a terabyte per second. Oh, wow. So literally, we can download an entire high drive in one second from space. That is awesome. Yeah, that's that's pretty fast. Um, and two, the, there's a two-parter here. Firstly, you know, if we send a laser to point A to point B, like think the Bond movies, right? If someone trips that laser, you just cut off the beam and stop the transmission. So like a satellite to interfere has to be directly in the way and then you know that they're interfering and you can stop it. Versus right now, well, we don't know who's listening in on who. We just assume everyone's listening on everyone, in short. (laughs) And then the part of it that's cool is we want to start quantum encrypting this data. So literally change the physical state of the light so that we can actually use quanta, like the basic laws of physics, to encrypt it, which literally cannot be broken. Like is the you're physically changing the properties of the particles and no one else will ever be able to figure out how to unbreak that, at least for now. Very cool. Hey, it's interesting because this isn't fully developed uh, by NASA at the moment, or it's not fully adopted by NASA either. So Australia is sort of leading leading the way here. Yeah, and you know, leading the way yet again, you know, we're we've been very good in a lot of things with communications. And it seems we're clever cookies, aren't we? Well, it is, and it, it seems something very simple, but it's a very important thing. Like you know, that is like the fundamental aspect of everything in space and everywhere. You know, and you just go back to you know, as we talked about 50 years ago with the moon landing, but also then what we've done with um, like Wi-Fi and radio telescopes, and now applying it to the next generation. And, and and keep this in mind, this is the big thing. This is the next big race between every group. You know, whoever perfects this technology, not only just doing the laser transfer but the quantum part you know will win the next big patent it will be the next thing that revolutionizes our world because it's not just about 
about sending things into space for you know astronauts and satellites but then if you can instantaneously transfer this data securely all around the world you revolutionize how we communicate here on earth as well and that's a really big deal and it's interesting as well because um you know glenn nagel's been on the show from the uh, cdscc talking about all as you're talking about all of these interferences with radio waves and the download speeds and all that sort of stuff is it going to help our uh, missions out to the further reaches of the solar system as well well so so this is the trick right so the 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 issue with the laser beam is to go further away you need more power and so you need a bigger laser beam and there's only a certain point to which you just get to the death star and <laughs> you know <laughs> government agencies are a bit hesitant on funding death stars nowadays for some reason um but and so and i think this is kind of the exciting thing is that while uh, it won't happen yet. You can see that in the future as, you know, laser technology improves and as things refine, that this is where things are headed. And if we're going to start putting uh, humans on the moon and then onto Mars, you could sort of do little hops. Exactly. That's right. You can do laser station relays, uh, you know, and, and there's lots of different things you can do. And it's all about making things faster. You know, if we're going to be sending humans back to the moon, we have lots of data and telemetry. You know, again, just think about, you know, 50 years ago in our chats, right? The reason there were so many radio telescopes is they had to talk to the astronauts on the ground and then they had to talk to the command module and then they had to track it and then they had to get certain types of data and health data. All of that stuff has, it takes a long time to download. If you compress it to a laser beam, you kind of solve that issue. Get exclusive access to podcasts and behind the scenes info by becoming a member on Patreon today. Supporting Australia's unofficial home of Star Trek gets even better with membership starting at just $1 per month. Jump over to patreon.com slash trekzone.org.au. Alrighty, well, let's move on to the other big uh, news of the week. And this is uh, dominating headlines uh, around the world. The Chandrayaan 2 lander. Uh, unfortunately, we've had another hard landing on the moon this year. It wasn't as hard of a landing as Israel. So it was a, it was a medium landing, I think. It was an off instead of a boom. That's right. That's right. <laughs> uh, you know, and so so for those who don't know, uh, we, I think we chatted about this briefly last week. India was attempted to be the fourth country to do the soft landing on the moon, to really successfully land on the moon. Uh, it didn't fully work in the sense that what was happening is on Saturday, so Saturday morning, Australian Eastern time, uh, they were going through the various phases and then they switched from fine, kind of slow breaking to fine breaking. Now, the moon is actually kind of trickier than Mars, right? Mars has an atmosphere, so you can put out parachutes, you create drag, you slow down. The moon essentially has no atmosphere, so there's nothing to slow you down. Um, so you have to do a lot of reverse thrustery firing and doing it at the right way in the right direction to really get achieve in that, that soft landing. Uh, during that phase at about 2.1 kilometers, they had some sort of communication issue, and then the trajectory started deviating away from what it planned. It descended to too fast uh, and it hit the ground and they have not communicated with it since Saturday morning our time. Interestingly, the orbiters come back around for another pass over the landing site and it's discovered, as, as you say, it hasn't made as hard a landing as one might suggest with that term. Uh, it's intact, it's on the ground, pretty close to where they were hoping to land and they've taken some photos of it but um, the uh, ISRO haven't released those images uh, to the public yet. Th that's right. So, you know, it, so I, I think there's a couple Couple things. So firstly, we should say that, you know, they do have the orbiter that's been very successful um, and the orbiter is in, you know, has about a year of operation. And then look, you know, it was India's first orbiter that actually really showed there's a lot of ice on the moon and that's gotten everyone excited. So, you know, it, it's credit to India. And as you said, they have an image that they've reported that they, they can see it in one piece. And that's a big deal, you know, whether they ever get it back up. Hard to say, you know, it depends. <laughs> If they know where it is and if it does appear that it is not shattered or broken, and, and, and keep in mind, Israel's did hit hard, it can potentially be recovered. You know, we do this for satellites around the Earth all the time. We do, you know, essentially control, alt, delete a thousand times, and eventually <laughs> uh, it decides to reboot itself. Now, whether that will actually happen or not, who knows, but this at least does have a better chance. And, and, I, and I think regardless of that, you know, I think two things are amazing. You know, firstly, until January 1st of this year, only two countries have attempted to land on the moon. And this year alone, in nine months, three countries have, you know, and that's a really big deal. And they've gotten really close. And, and more importantly, they showed that they can do missions cost effectively. So the mission was only $140 million, which to put into perspective, 
Armageddon and Gravity both cost more as movies about <laughs> space than they paid to go to sp the moon, right? I mean, that's kind of remarkable. That is the sort of budget that we're talking about nowadays. Is this something to suggest that maybe Hollywood should just go to the moon and, and take a couple of IMAX cameras along with them? It would almost be cheaper. Like they would have, <laughs> and, and also Armageddon would have been a better movie. You know, I mean, hey, now that. don't you be knocking Armageddon. <laughs> no, I mean, I would love to shoot Bruce Willis on an asteroid. <laughs> but you know, it's the sort of idea that. It's kind of comical that, yes, it's becoming cheaper to just almost do it in space. You know, it, it's kind of funny, you know, people always talk about how Stanley Kubrick did the real moon landing. Um, and it's like, well, nowadays you, you almost could. And that's kind of <laughs> that's kind of the silly thing where it's moving. And this is the impressive part, I think, about when India shown. They did a quick mission, you know, relatively quick, relatively cost effectively, and it mostly worked. And for those who say, well, it didn't fully work, the U.S. had plenty of missions that haven't worked on the moon, and same with Russia, you know, so they're not alone. It's interesting because NASA's moon fact sheet uh, talks about 109 lunar missions uh, in the last six decades, uh, and there's only a 40% uh, success rate. So it is a little bit tricky. It is. You know, when we talk about success rate, we mean fully successful. So, you know, different parts work at different aspects. And this is the same with this India mission. The orbiter still completely worked. It's still in orbit. The lander didn't fully work in the rover, but, you know, half of it did, similar to what it, the U.S. has done in the past. And and the same with Mars. You know, a lot of the Mars missions aren't fully successful. It's, it's still rocket science. It's still hard. Well, it's fascinating. And uh, looking forward to hopefully uh, hearing that they have been able to make contact uh, I guess it's all depending on uh, how it's landed, uh, if the antennas are intact and pointing in the right direction and whether those uh, solar panels all at different angles are getting enough charge to keep those batteries going. Exactly. You know, there's there's a few different definite things that they have to work on, you know, and it's, it is it is something in progress. So, you know, hopefully on our next chat next Tuesday, we'll have a good update about where it's at. And, uh, you know, and, and regardless of this, India is going to try again because, you know, the cool thing is once you've built it once, it's a lot cheaper to build it a second time um, because you know how to do it you know where the, the tricks are you know what you need to perfect so i'm not surprised if they attempt it again and you know and india has already said that you know they want to put a human in space by 2022 on their own rocket so you know india is is quickly showing that they are amongst the top of the global space powers fantastic brad well we better let you go and board that plane to the gold coast and uh, we'll be seeing you in the southeast uh, today Sounds good. You can get social with Trekzone. Australia's unofficial home of Star Trek is everywhere you are. Get the wrap up on our Facebook page. Keep in the loop on Twitter and relive Trek episodes on Instagram. Just search for Trekzone.